Welcome to the continuation of the leadership theories and the kind of styles that we see in our contemporary world. Uh, why it is important for uh, especially BBA RM students to know about it is that in each uh, the village which you, which you belong to, if you are coming from a village background or even in the Ilaka, uh, the locality where you live in an urban uh, area, you will find some uh, leaders emerging out due to various reasons. But when you are working in an organization, you know the leader is set, you have your MD okay, or you have your managing director, chief executive officer or you have your own functional head, vice president uh, production or vice president uh, supply chain management, anything you call it, you have your own leader who is set, he cannot be changed and you are working with him. Okay? What kind of uh, leaders you come across in the organizations is very interesting topic and uh, Robert House way back in 1971 came out with a model which is akin to Victor Vroom's uh, you know motivation theory, directive, supportive, participative, achievement oriented motives. These are the motives which will drive a person to participate in a process and get motivated. Okay? Uh, the similar way Robert House in 1971 postulated a theory called path goal oriented theory, theory. Path goal theory is nothing but there is a path, there is a goal. Path is uh, defined and goal is also defined. What is the path? Paths have taken from the motivational uh, theory of Victor Room, directive path, supportive path, participative path and achievement oriented path. What is the goal? Goal may vary from person to person, organization to organization. Okay? Uh, let me explain this one by taking specific examples of how we see leaders. Okay? There are some uh, leaders in the business organizations, they found that uh, they only need to direct of their people so that they will achieve the results what happens? They are habituated to give directions. They will say, okay, you do this job, people will go and try to do the job. They encounter some problems, they go back to the leader, sir, what happened, what will now, what will we do now, there is a problem, sir. Then he will say, okay, do this way. Say for example, you need to con uh, convince one uh, customer to buy products from you. Okay? The leader will tell you, suppose he is the vice president uh, marketing, he says you go to the uh, client or the customer, prospective customer, tell him that we will be offering him uh, 10 percent less than the competitors. Okay? Then uh, they will go there and tell them that we are giving you 10 percent less, yet the customer did not buy. Okay? They will come back to the leader, sir, he did not buy. Then the, uh, the director leader will say that, okay, find out why he is not buying and he will say that how to find out also. Go to the competitor in disguise as a customer and find out what other things he is offering you do some sort of a spying. Then the people will go there, do some spying. They will say, sir, sir, he is also offering annually okay, some incentives like some, you know, computers he is giving, desktops, laptops he is giving. That is the reason customer is taking. Then, the directive leader what they will say, 
we will also give no that is not going to work if he is matching what the competitor is giving that will not happen he has to go beyond that then the customer will buy in the process what will happen in a directive leadership style the leader decides what is to be done because he will go back to his md and say sir as a marketing head i have done that he needs promotion so he wants to do everything under his control with his approval and things like that imagine this marketing manager is a supportive leader he supports then what he will say will say boss our md told us that we have to sell these many items to abc customer this year i know abc customer is buying from our competitor somehow we have to manage to convince them to buy our products can you make your efforts he is a bit open he has given them scope and opportunity to think about it and he will say okay sir we will try they keep trying giving feedback he keeps supporting them he keeps giving his inputs they are also giving the input okay in a supporting manner the marketing team will feel that they are actually doing the job with the support of the boss but they ensure that the boss is informed and his support is taken so every time they will send an email message saying sir the customer is asking for this kind of favors can we give what are the favors 1 2 3 4 4 the boss says okay we can give 1 2 3 4 4 and also add 5 then they go ahead with that this is how a supportive leadership behaves with his followers there is another leadership which is nothing but a participatory leadership what will happen the marketing head comes out of his room goes to the field have first hand information about what is happening over there okay and he will not tell his designation he will meet the customer just like any other employee okay and feels how the customer is talking to him how the people are facing the customer what kind of uh, questions are being asked by the customers and he participates he goes along with the team members does the work by himself also along with them and uh, then the people will feel thrilled my boss is not just a armchair leader he is a very active leader he comes along with us he participates in our field visits of course not always but he comes he knows what's happening in the organization he knows what's happening in the market we know only in the market but he knows also about the organization the limitations of the organization he knows the challenges in the market we also know he also knows so he is the best person to guide us so that's how people develop affinity value respect there is another leader achievement oriented leadership okay what he will do he puts himself as one of the team members okay and sometimes he gives the leadership position to one of the members based on the achievements he made it's a very informal setup kind of a thing where the head of the marketing will remain the head of the marketing but when it comes to various other activities like field visits promotional activities talking about the organization meeting the press okay addressing the press releasing the souvenirs getting the rewards recognition participating in events okay going to the government and uh, receiving the rewards all these things uh, he will assign to another person or some other persons because uh, that leader 
will enable the people to achieve something and based on that achievement he gives them the leadership it is a very uh, enthusiastic and very effective leadership style of leadership but all these leadership styles will have their own uh, shortcomings because you cannot stick to one particular leadership style uh, you you need to understand what the customer demands what the market demands what the organizational uh, limitations what can organization do all these things put together will make you understand uh, your path and your goal in understanding the leadership style so th this is what uh, in a nutshell the path goal theory now let us shift to managerial grid theory very interesting theory robert uh, blake and uh, jane moulton they are experimental psychologists at the university of texas uh, this has become uh, a wonderful uh, theory which has been talked about uh, uh, widely uh, in uh, various books and even the uh, you know the university associates uh, series of experiential learning uh, events which they published so blake and uh, moulton uh, have become the uh, very famous names because they have given uh, a kind of uh, a new perspective uh, to understand two aspects which are uh, uh, very critical for any business organization okay you can uh, substitute these two aspects according to the requirements of the organization you may say for concern for sales instead of concern for production okay concern for profitability instead of concern for sale you can put anything on the uh, you know the uh, vertical and horizontal axis it's nothing but uh, a grid is nothing but uh, a square where the corners of each square are met uh, by x axis and y axis okay x axis is uh, horizontal y axis is vertical in the vertical and horizontal you will have x axis and y axis on the uh, vertical you will have uh, concern for people on the horizontal you can have concern for production or concern for sales or concern for profitability okay you can put anything put together any one of them but only two factors will vary okay one is x axis other one is y axis y axis is concern for people x axis is concern for production in the typical graph if concern for production is one and also concern for people is one it's called a very very poor management and leadership style impoverished management because it's autocratic it is task leadership style because in you know, some people you will find uh, they decide the fate of the organization by their style of leadership too much okay you will find on the other side the first scenario the first grid 1.1 is that 1 and 1 okay 1 1 uh, and 1 is that on the uh, y axis 1 x axis 1 both are one they are meeting together resulting in impoverished management you have another style which is very interesting concern for people it is uh, labeled as country club in a typical country club people are valued more okay than the outcome they give so much care for people they give damn for the business 
they say my boss is good to get goody goody remarks all the subordinates are given promotion you will find in uh, some of the organizations uh, more promotions are being given but the productivity is low okay the salaries are increased but the there is no increase in the net profit so uh, people would like to be goody goody with people and uh, there is no concern for the production which is called country club management okay there is another style which is uh, uh, other extreme okay which says that come what may you have to produce these many things or you have to sell these many things or i must have the bottom line i mean to say the profit last year profit was 10% this year i must have 20% profit come what may authority okay they ask people fall in line those who can do stay in this organization those who cannot do look for jobs outside some people may get jobs instantaneously some people may get jobs in the middle of the uh, financial year some people may not get jobs they stay in the organization but what is the fate of these people the fate of the people is that they have to obey if they want monthly salary to be credited in their accounts on the first of every month they have to bloody obey whatever the boss says because authority is the ultimate thing so two characteristics are implying here one is absolute authority and absolute obedience it's only that will be working okay there is another uh, madhye vada which which means uh, in balance in in between it is in the balanced way of doing things what is it it's called uh, you have on a 10 point scale five is the concern for people on a 10 point scale five is the concern for profit okay you are a diplomat you will be very diplomatically doing things you give concern for people five and you will also focus on production or profitability or sales to the extent of five and these people are called organizational man management organization and man management they manage the organization they do not uh, drown the organization into losses at the same time they manage the people also to remain in the organization don't look for jobs outside this this organization is going to flourish okay this kind of a balancing activity they will be doing it there is another extreme management style which is very interesting and very difficult to get that means you have got highest concern for people and you have got similar highest concern for profitability as much you care people so much you care for profitability what will happen you got to team up with people you cannot show your authority you cannot give favors okay and you cannot direct them the only option for that leader is that he has he has to collaborate with the team members and the team will have to collaborate with the leader both put together do the job and that is what is called a team management which means 9 on 9 you have 1 on 1 you have 1 9 you have 9 1 you have 5 5 and you have 9 9 this is how a a managerial grid theory explains various ways of doing things okay and uh, 
one is basically autocratic that is uh, impoverished the two is too much of democracy okay where layers fire people are very important not the profits these are all various ways you can interpret okay how the flow of influence happens from leader to the followers if you look at uh, the last slide uh, people would love to have team management okay they would love to have in the managerial grid model people would love to have team management because high concern for people high concern for profitability now let us understand three leadership styles okay one autocratic leader this autocratic leader will have a follower and that follower will simply listen to what the autocratic leader says flow of information is one way absolutely one way there is no two way communication you will have a democratic or participative leader where flow of information is not only two way multiple ways say for example leader to follower follower to follower from that follower to leader and from that leader to another follower and there is a cyclical way of doing things which means the communication flows from various ends and goes to the leader goes to the follower unlike autocratic leadership follower does not know what the leader is saying follower 2 does not know what the leader is saying follower 3 does not know what the leader is saying to the follower 1 which means followers are tight water type boxes autocratic leader will give it you know divide and rule kind of a thing it is simply divide and rule they give instructions to their bo- see you will find in organizations uh, this kind of things are happening because of organizational politics the c- some of the companies uh, will favor finance some of the companies will favor marketing S- companies in the sense ceos mds some mds play politics because uh, md has got no role in appointing some positions and those position holders uh, md does not like what he will do he will do politics he will ignore them in a different manner creatively he will ignore them but you know baat karta hai very sweetly very good okay but when it comes to taking decisions for them he will not give right decisions he will ensure that uh, they will fail so that uh, he can put his, his own man in those positions there are people who would like to send people out because they were appointed by other directors or the chairman so they do all kinds of politics as you join any organization be aware of the politics the politics will happen in an autocratic manner where divide and rule will hum will come there is absolutely no team mem- membership okay and uh, something like you know a leader would like to enjoy his life he has so much of money he got this job as a bonus so what he will do he will ask followers to do whatever they want each follower will create his own kingdom i have seen this happening in organizations he wanted to be in the chair somehow or other so what he will do he will give freedom to the followers each follower will develop his own kingdom in one of the organizations where i was working it's called free reign leadership free reign leadership is that if you are a hr head you run the hr department the way you are 
if you are a procurement head you run the procurement department if you are a marketing and sales head you run your things according to your whims and fancies but you give me this result at the end of the year i want this result whatever you do you do whatever it is what they will do they manipulate suppose they can give uh, 50% increase in the sales since they were given freedom and uh, the boss asked only for 10% they give only 10% they don't explore the possibility of giving 50% and they enjoy their own time everybody will be enjoying their own position and giving some you know uh, very gradual growth this year company has grown from 5% to 5.5% from 5.5% to 6% which means a, a typical snails pace increase in the profitability everybody is enjoying they go on tours to meet the customers they spend money they hold for parties they host dinners for the customers resulting in nothing so remember that in many organizations many styles of leadership is in force they are operating only thing is you need to why you should know these leadership styles because each leadership style shows through a behavior unfortunate or fortunate thing for human beings is that they cannot hide their behaviors they cannot hide their behaviors and that behavior is the real indicator of how the leader is actually leading is he leading as an autocratic leader or is he leading as a democratic leader or is he giving freedom to all the group heads and is enjoying his own position ensuring that taking promises from each one of them that they will give this much growth though the scope is there for more growth and many times it ha- it so happen sir you have given 10% i can achieve only 8% because you, your 10% is too high they can even negotiate so that's how it happens so many people uh, cheat themselves as leaders cheat their followers cheat the organizations and uh, that is happening because of vested interest because of uh, their own agenda they have their own businesses they run this one for many things okay now last but not the least is the leadership continuum robert tenenbaum and warren schmidt these two people have given this continuum continuum is nothing but a range from low to high on that range various points will happen various things will happen various postulations will happen various stances will be taken by people various aspects will be shown various situations will be emerging out so a continuum is a scenario where from one end to the other end many things can happen in that continuum one side is seen differently other side is seen differently okay in a typical continuum you will find that one side is use of authority other is freedom for the subordinates in a typical continuum if you have two aspects one is use of authority other one is freedom for the subordinates what will happen when it when it will happen how it will happen is what this leadership continuum theory is going to talk about the adoption of leadership styles to different situations in the leadership continuum concept is the basis of this leadership continuum they suggest that leadership involves variety of styles as i told you very well you will find a particular leader following different leadership styles in his entire lifetime say for example in a year an md of your organization 
you might be seeing him as a dictator some for some time you may, might be seeing him as a participative uh, person you might be seeing him as a team player he is involving himself and you may be seeing him as directing only <coughs> he is not involving anything he simply directs why it is happening like that because leaders adopt a style based on a situation okay and the situation demands certain things that it has to happen that way say for example complying to safety standards the use of authority is more the safety professional will tell this is how you have to operate this mission this is the only safest way of operating the mission that's all you have to follow he will give the decision this is how it has to be cleaned you cannot clean the other way around okay so when it comes to safety the safety person tells what is to be done the person working in various places will follow the instruct safety instructions meticulously okay then there is another scenario which says that the leader takes a decision okay explains the decision and sells the decision i mean to say convince the people why our company should not participate in the exhibition conducted by government of tamil nadu say for example many companies are going why our company is not going he takes a decision not to participate why he explains if we participate one two three four five things will be perceived by government of tamil nadu if we do not participate government of tamil nadu will think twice about giving permission to us for our establishing our unit in tamil nadu and uh, the leader convinces the people okay so people will accept it there is a communication so it's not directive kind of a thing there is a communication and people will get convinced by the communication okay so the use of authority is restricted to communicating and people get convinced because of the communication and leader implements his entire uh, eventually his decision his decision is not to participate he communicated very well in a convincing manner people also accepted it now there is another scenario let us take the same example he he tries to take the decision in a collective manner either to participate in the trade fair conducted by tamil nadu government he will call all the stakeholders production people marketing people sales people r and d people okay legal people and other things he will ask suggestions he will question suppose somebody has given a decision sir let us not participate then he will say why why we should not participate what is preventing you from saying that we should participate then he will question he will ask so many questions then that fellow either will get conv convince him or the leader will convince him and other people will also join because since it is a collaborative and consulting process 
everybody joins give their best and a collective decision is taken then everybody will be happy. There is another scenario same let us take the same example an invitation has come from government of Tamil Nadu to participate in the trade fair. Okay. In this case the leader simply sends an email with that attachment okay, and tells I have got so many works to do. I am going on a foreign trip to meet important customers. Okay. You decide whether to participate in the trade fair or not among us to yourself. He simply share, shares the invitation to all the group heads, I mean to say the departmental heads, HODs or the leaders in the functional areas and they sit together collectively they decide and they own the responsibility, they are accountable for whatever happens. happens. But he tells, the leader tells, if you want to participate, if you take a decision to participate, this is the budget for spending. Beyond that, I cannot give you. Okay. So, the leader defines the limits and tells whatever you take. Okay. There is another scenario where leader will not have any thing to say because he believes in delegation. All financial aspects he will delegate to the chief financial officer, all HR aspects he will delegate to the chief people officer, all IT related aspects he will delegate to the IT officer, chief IT officer, chief production officer, chief operating officer. These are all the people who, who, whom he has you know appointed, inducted and they are getting the results from these people. Then the best leader will be I will concentrate on other developmental activities for this organization. You run the organization. You are the domain specialists. You are the leaders of your own domain. Go ahead do whatever you want. If there is a problem, consult me. He will always say that. He will be a supporter. He will give them feedback and everything else, but make them accountable for their actions. And he, he, will, he, will, give, he will also give limits. He will say that within that limit, limit only you can. Suppose you are going to incur loss, this loss shall not ex exceed this much amount. He is willing to take risk also sometimes. So, there are uh, scenarios like that uh, you will find it in organizations. So, the best thing to learn from these sessions is that uh, there is a leader within you and that leader must adopt variety of styles, variety of stances, variety of decision making processes based on the demands of the situation. Okay. If the situation demands uh, a collaborative leadership you must go for it. If the situation demands authoritarian, then you must say do what I say, there is the matter. Because you know what is good for yourself, what is good for your family, what is good for your organization also sometimes you know and you decide what is to be done. And then you will become a situational leader, that is what I am telling you. You have to show your leadership styles leadership traits, leadership qualities, leadership capabilities as you grow in the uh, world as a human being, as you grow in the organization as an employee, you have to show your leadership. That is the reason this lesson has been incorporated as a part of your BBA rural management course. All the best to you.